Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is sleepy little Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. This is another video in our series on logical fallacies and in this video we'll be looking at the anecdotal fallacy. The anecdotal fallacy occurs when people use their limited personal experience to make sweeping conclusions or to dismiss statistical findings. It is an extremely common fallacy to commit and nearly everyone has done it at some stage. And that includes me. I was interviewed recently for a podcast with the lads on tour. And at the end of the interview, I was asked if there was anything I'd like to do a video on that I hadn't done yet. I mentioned the demonizing of carbohydrates by proponents of low-carb diets. And then to my shame, I proceeded to share the anecdote that I've eaten a high-carb diet my whole life and that I'm not overweight and all my blood work is perfect, blah, blah, blah. This is, of course, irrelevant because... I'm only one person. The fact that I have stayed healthy following a high-carb diet doesn't mean that would necessarily be the case for everyone. Of course, there is considerable scientific evidence that a Mediterranean diet, which is not low-carb, is associated with good health, but that doesn't alter the fact that I committed a logical fallacy. Of course, I'm not the only one. Whenever I show information in videos showing the benefits of vaccines, like this slide here, which clearly shows that unvaccinated people are much more likely to die from COVID than vaccinated people, my comment section is inundated with unvaccinated people sharing their anecdotes. Here's a few examples. I only believe the evidence around me. There's nobody affected by the corona flu bug. If it was really bad, then surely loads of people should be affected. That's why there's people who aren't interested in taking an injection they don't need. Surely you can see that, can't you? And there's this. Well, I'm 63, unvaccinated and had Omicron in May, and it lasted one day. And another. I had Omicron and it barely gave me mild cold symptoms. I think she is full of it. Plus. She is really annoying. Mm. Now, of course, we know that COVID isn't serious for everyone. So it's not surprising that some unvaccinated people do okay. However, these anecdotes don't change the fact that if you are unvaccinated, you are more likely to get serious disease, you are more likely to be hospitalized, and you are more likely to die. And of course, unvaccinated people who have sadly died from COVID aren't able to post about it on social media because they're dead. Some people just don't quietly not get vaccinated, though. Some people choose to spread misinformation about vaccines on social media. This website here documents vocal anti-vaxxers who have subsequently died or suffered serious outcomes from COVID. Some of those who have survived have changed their tune and are no longer anti-vaxxers, which shows how powerful personal experience is. And we don't just see the anecdotal fallacy used with vaccines. It is also used by proponents of ivermectin who think because they took ivermectin and didn't die from COVID, it means ivermectin works. But I'd like to talk about an example of the anecdotal fallacy which is, in fact, much more dangerous and much more closer to home. This is a photo of my parents on their wedding day. If you look closely at the photo, you'll see my dad is holding a cigarette. Yes, my dad was a smoker. Now, my father was a wonderful dad, and so it really used to upset me that he smoked because I didn't want to lose him. From the age of about 14, I did my best to convince him to give up by sharing all the latest science on the dangers of smoking with him. He dismissed all of this by telling me about one of his relatives who had been a smoker and lived 
to 90. And my father wasn't alone in believing anecdotes over science. This study here shows that many smokers believe that they won't have health issues from smoking based on anecdotes of people who didn't have adverse effects from smoking. And of course, these people could be right. We know that up to two-thirds of deaths in current smokers can be attributed to smoking, and current smokers are estimated to die an average of 10 years earlier than non-smokers. But this means, though, that one-third of smokers will be lucky and will be around to create lots of anecdotes for other people. The odds aren't good, though, if you are a smoker. My father did, though, finally experience a much more powerful anecdote than his relative who lived to 90. He watched his best friend, who was also a smoker, die from lung cancer. From that moment, my father never smoked again and became an anti-smoker. He would often remark to me that he couldn't believe people were stupid enough to keep smoking. He had experienced an anecdote that was in agreement with the science, but it was the anecdote and not the science that convinced him. Unfortunately, by the time my father gave up smoking, he had been smoking for over 30 years. Although he lived a very happy life, he developed vascular dementia about 15 years ago and he died earlier this year from a combination of the vascular dementia and heart failure, both of which can be caused by smoking. Now, of course, I can't say for sure that it was smoking that caused these conditions. They can have other causes as well. But I sure wish my father hadn't succumbed to the anecdotal fallacy and had listened to the science. So if you see people succumbing to the anecdotal fallacy, please share this video with them. But don't be too hard on them. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that YouTube will share it with more people. I'll be making more videos in the future looking at logical fallacies. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.